Hi YouTubers, Jeff Cote here with a session on Ask PYS. Okay, so we've got a boater, Mark. Mark has three battery banks. He's got a battery bank for his engine. That's the first battery bank. Second, for his house. Third, for his windlass and thruster. And what uh, Mark noticed is that his windlass and thruster battery bank only get charged when the ch charger is energized from AC, meaning that that battery bank does not get a charge from the alternator when the engine is running. And Mark is asking, Jeff, I've been asking on the dock and people think it's normal that my thruster and my windlass battery doesn't get a charge from the alternator, but only get a charge through the battery charger when I'm connected to shore power. And an important note here, this owner does not have a generator, so he cannot run the generator when he's not connected to shore power. In my opinion, I would strongly encourage all of us boaters to install and have a way to recharge a thruster and windless battery bank while the engine is running. That's when you're going to be using that battery bank. Think about it, that battery bank is never used at the dock. It's used when you're anchoring or you're docking, right? Thruster, docking, sometimes maybe anchoring, and windless again. But if you do a whole trip and you, you leave the dock, you need your thruster, you get to an anchorage, you drop the windlass, you lift the windlass, you go to another anchorage, now you're using the windlass again, maybe the thruster, all that time while you're away from shore power, that battery bank is just getting drained and drained and drained and drained. And what do we know about battery banks and inductive loads or motors? A thruster is a motor, a windlass is a motor, and we know that they hate having low voltage. Most of those battery banks are gonna be added without a voltmeter. Why? Because the people that install those battery banks aren't really electricians, right? Generally, they're just generalists, right? And they're like, oh, you need a battery? I'll put a battery. But they're not thinking, oh, it needs to be monitored. They're like, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, I worry about all those things. Why? Because they become problems, and problems aren't good. You don't wanna have problems on your boat, right? You wanna reduce that. So what you need to do is you need to install a battery combiner between your house battery and the thruster battery bank or you install a battery isolator. So there's two choices, right? You either go battery combiner, battery to battery, or you go alternator input going to multiple battery banks. Either way, you absolutely, my suggestion, want to have your thruster and windless battery bank get a charge while you are boating. And the way to do that is when your alternator or your engine is running, your alternator is turning, when it's turning, it's outputting, take that energy and have it go to multiple places. Alter, your, your windlass and your thruster will die because of low voltage. Not because they were badly manufactured, not because you're unlucky, not because life ain't fair. They're going to die because they have low voltage. And the way to avoid that is having a battery combiner or a battery isolator installed so that when the engine is running, that battery bank can get a charge. And therefore, both the windlass and the thruster are going to work perfectly as we would expect them to. So that's a good question. Thanks for watching this video. Glad to donate my time to make these videos and to share our passion for marine electrical. Help us keep this channel ad free by donating on PayPal, link below, or also potentially buying some of our merchandise on our store. We hear we've got a hoodie, we've got a hat, and we also have some tumblers and other gear. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.